So, we prayed, and I'm going to read these encouraging words that God gave me today to share with everybody. So, I want to talk to those that are going through some issues. You Maybe you're going through some loss. You know, coronavirus happened, and a lot of people lost things, you know. Maybe you lost jobs. Maybe you, lo- you lost a loved one. Maybe you lost, you know, your house, or you lost something that's really precious to you. But I want to encourage you today to let you know that, that th- we serve a God that is a God of redemption, okay? We know that in the book of Ruth, you know, Ruth and Naomi lost a lot of things. Naomi lost her husband and her two children, her two sons, right? Ruth lost her husband, okay? And they were in um, Moab, a place of famine, okay? Famine came upon Moab. First of all, Naomi and her husband, they moved from Bethlehem to go to, um, to go to, um, they moved from Bethlehem to go to Moab to get, to get provision. And when they got there, after they lived there for some time, you know, famine hit the place and they experienced famine again. So what happened is that Naomi had to go back to Bethlehem, okay, to go and, and and find provision because in Bethlehem, there was a lot of provision happening there. So she heard, hey, things are going great in, in Bethlehem. So she went back and Ruth went with her because Naomi introduced Ruth to God, okay, because Naomi was a, a person who, who served the Lord. Her name means pleasant, okay? So she moved to Bethlehem, and in that in that obedience to move where God wanted her to move, even though she had lost a lot of things, right? God restored to them. God restored grain, you know, provision back to Naomi, okay? And God restored back to Ruth. Ruth got a husband, Boaz, okay? And she also got provision. So I want to encourage you that whatever you've lost, remember that there's a season for everything, right? It says in Ecclesiastes 3, 4, Ecclesiastes, that, that's a really hard word to say. Anyway, 3, 4, it says a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. So remember that we are in seasons where... There are seasons in our lives where there'll be times where it's a time to mourn or a time to just be in a a testing or in a, um, you know, in a, in a position where it's not pleasant, you know, weeping is not pleasant, but laughter comes right after that mourning is not pleasant, but dance come, you have a joyful dance that will happen. But if you press through right with the Lord and you go through it, guess what? God is a God of redemption. God is a God that will turn around for your favor, right? Just as he did for Job, he will do it for you. So there are two things that you might have to go through. You might have to, you know, endure. You might have to be, it might have to leave you. You might have to lose everything. But guess what? God is a God who will give you the recompense, right? He will give you a recompense blessing, the double for your trouble. So I want to encourage you with that, that if you are somebody that, you know, you think you've lost a lot of things, just know that whatever you are going through, it is necessary, okay, for your journey. It is necessary for your journey. You never know. You might be the person that will have to encourage somebody, right, to better their life or to encourage somebody or even give your testimony to bless somebody, right? Um, you are, you are, so you are a, a um, a daughter of the Lord. I want to remind you that you are a daughter. You are a daughter of the Most High God. Before the enemy targeted you, before the enemy targeted you, okay, God chose you, okay. God chose you just as He chose Jeremiah, right? God chose you. He chose you for this this life. So your life is worth living. Do not think that your life is not worth living. In Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes. That's a lot. That's a big word. <laughs> Three, four. Time to weep. A time to laugh. It always comes around for a time to laugh. Laughter is coming. A time to mourn. And a time to dance. So know that just when you're about to give up, that is when it's a time for you to dance. Just when you're about to give up, that's when it's time for you to laugh. Okay? And I want to encourage you with this. Be bold. Those that God has called you to walk in your purpose in this time. You might say, oh, I don't have this. I don't have this in, you know, together. Just don't look at what you don't have. 
Know that if God has called you to do something, he will provide for you. Don't look at how the money is going to come. Don't look at how the resources are going to come. Don't look at how who is going to help you and who's not. Just look to the Lord. He got you. He got you. So I want to tell you, those that are called and chosen and, and called to do a thing at this time, to birth out something, to create something, to start something, to produce something, to to um, establish something. I want to encourage you. Be bold in God. Not in yourself. Not in man. Not in anybody. But in God. Okay. Because who he has called. Which is you. Is beautiful. Okay. It's beautiful. Because he has a beautiful plan for you. He has called you. Okay. He has called you righteous. He's called you chosen. He's called you a leader. He's called you a, a mountain mover. He's called you a warrior. So that is who you are. Pick up. Pick yourself back up and keep stepping because you're stepping with the Lord, okay? And I want to remind you, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans, okay? Meaning plans, thoughts that I have, I that I think toward you. God is saying this, for I know the plans that I think toward you, says the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Sometimes when you're going through your Ecclesiastes 3, 4, issues of weeping and mourning you might think that you know god is is thinking evil but he said no he has thoughts of peace to give you life and life and life abundantly and, and to give you a future and a hope we know that the enemy comes to kill steal and destroy right in john 10 10 but god said he came to give you life life abundantly so i want you to focus on the positive things that god is saying and just rebuke the the Negative things that the enemy is saying, all right? God's voice gives you peace. His voice reassures you of, of his, his word and his promises. His voice, is, 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 it comes with love, okay? Even when he is correcting you, he corrects you with love because God corrects those that he loves, okay? I want to remind you of this, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Remember that other things that are happening in the world right now, all the economy issues and all what all that's happening. Don't look at everything that's happening, but look to the Lord. Have have a a um a, pl- a time where you just say, you know what, I'm not gonna look to what's happening around me right now. I'm just gonna look to the Lord, knowing that He is the one that created me. He knew. This day was going to come. He knew this season that you are in is going to come. So if he knew it, then guess what? He has it figured out. All you have to do is just look up and he's going to help you. He's going to guide your steps. He's going to guide your step because he orders our step, right? The Bible says that, you know, man plans his ways, right? But the Lord orders our steps. And I want to leave you with this. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I gave you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you okay this is very important luke 10 19 god is saying that he's giving you power he's giving you power authority okay over the power of darkness authority that god has given us he's given us authority and power the enemy doesn't have authority unless you give him authority by agreeing with what he says. But you have to denounce what the enemy says and don't believe it. Okay? Whatever the enemy has been telling you, denounce it. Rebuke it. Dis- dismantle it with prayer. And know that God has given you the power. That you have God has placed in you. If you are a child of God, you've prayed a salvation prayer, you believe in your heart that the Lord, that Jesus is is. Jesus is Lord and he died on the cross for you and me, our sins. And he rose up on the third day. You have that authority. You have you have been given that right to trample upon scorpions and, and, and serpents and everything that is, is in um over and you have power over the, the the um the enemy and nothing God says nothing can harm me harm you. Nothing can harm you. The enemy the enemy might try to come, but guess what? God is with you. He has his angels over you and guarding you okay so remember you got to pray psalms 91 and psalms 23 over yourself so i want to encourage you with these okay that remember jeremiah 29 11 
Ecclesiastes, oh my god, that, that word, that Bible verse is really hard to say. Ecclesiastes 3 4, <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5 7, and Luke 10 19. Okay, so remember that you are chosen. Okay, God loves you, and you are a daughter of the Most High, you are a son of the Most High King. Okay, so now that we have had encouragement, okay, we've had encouragement. All things are possible with the Lord. Have faith in the Lord. Be still and know that he is God, right? Be still and know that he is God. If he's let the Israelites from, you know, Egypt, he's going to lead you to your promised land as well. All right? So now we're going to look in Proverbs. So we're studying the book of Proverbs, right? During this time of press with the Lord. We're going to learn a lot of meat in this um, word. I love the book of Psalms and Proverbs. I love them. Um, Proverbs is put in three, three, um, three, three sections. Okay, so I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it, and then I'm just gonna give you revelation of each section that I that I I got as I read it. And you can also, you know, put down on the comments what you yourself is. You know what revelations the Lord is giving you as you read it. Okay, maybe your revelation might not be my revelation because we might be in different seasons in life that certain things might speak to me at a certain season and it might not speak to you, or certain things might speak to you and it might not speak to me right now. But there's so much meat in here. All right, so let's let's take a moment to um, look at revelations. I mean, revelations, <laughs> proverbs. Um, for some revelation to pour down on us today. All right, so I want you to open to Proverbs. Proverbs. Um, I want you to open to Proverbs 1. So Proverbs is really basically right after Psalms. All right, so Proverbs 1. It says, Fatherly exhortations addressed mainly to the young, okay? So, the, so there are three sections to Proverbs. There is the, the purpose of the book, okay? Which is from Proverbs 1, 1 to 6. And then there's the wisdom foundation, uh, which is the fear of the Lord. So Proverbs 1, 7 to 19, okay? And then the second, the third part of Proverbs 1 is the wisdom, the wisdom's warning, okay? Which is from Proverbs 1, 20 to 33, okay? So I'm going to read the first section.